Hey everyone, Nathan here, Absurd Being. Okay, so Watsuji with his ethics. Um, so where do we finish in the last video? We got to the end of chapter 5, where um, Watsuji has talked about the individual being the negation of community and the opposite, the inverse, community being the negation of the individual. And these were really important insights, I feel. Uh, this idea of negation having a more, having a, having a prominent role. Um, and that, that I think is, is something definitely to be, that we, that we should definitely pick up and, and, and use, especially in our ethics. But at the very end of chapter five, there is a about, I think it's less than a page where Watsuji takes all of that, the, uh, the work that he's done and, and tries to cash it out in some kind of Buddhist metaphysics. Now, I've already said that he's not, he kind of walks a fine line between the Buddhist philosophy, met slash metaphysics, and um, more like secular philosophy, but, and and he does, and, and so he was never Buddhist enough to be part of the Kyoto school, um, rightly so, I think, but still he does have Buddhist leanings, and so this is his, his attempt to kind of bring in a little bit of that here, and um, you already know my, you probably already know, possibly already know my uh, dislike of this kind of thing, Buddhist metaphysical philosophy. Um, and these, these, the notion of things like absolute emptiness or nothingness um, used in a metaphysical sense. So I already have some reservations about that, but this was kind of a good opportunity to just, flesh out why I don't like this, where it is that I feel it goes wrong. So even though it's a very short section in, in the book itself, um, I'm going to spend this video talking about it. And, uh, and it comes up again uh, throughout the book as well, so it's good to just kind of hammer it out now so we can, um, from my perspective, we can just ignore it later when it crops up. But that's what this this uh, this video is about, an interlude into absolute emptiness. So the way uh, I'm going to approach this, there's a, a little quote which I'm going to take from that, that section at the end of chapter 5, and we will just analyze that. So where we pick up this story is that Watsuji's just talked about the way that the whole is the negation of the individual. Uh, the negation of discrimination is, is the word that he uses. And this is the quote. If this wholeness is the negation of discrimination, then absolute wholeness, which transcends the finite and relative whole, is the absolute negation of discrimination. Because of its being absolute, it must be that non-discriminateness which negates the distinction between discriminateness and non-discriminateness. Hence, absolute wholeness is absolute negation and absolute emptiness. Therefore, every community of human beings, that is, the whole in human beings, can become manifest only to the extent that emptiness is realized among individual human beings. Okay, so that's the quote. Now we need to break this down. So the first thing we'll start with is the, uh, the good from Watsuji's position here. Wholeness is negation of discrimination. That's where he's talking about what, what it is, what a, a community is. So it's not just, the idea here is then it's not just putting together. It's not an additive kind of thing. We're not adding separate parts to get the whole. Because all that gives you is separate parts. You don't, you don't overcome 
that kind of fundamental atomism of the of the parts of the individuals if all you're doing is sticking them together rather what we have to do to get the wholeness of community is negate the differences negate those individuals so they're not individuals we don't see them as individuals anymore we see them as this as parts of this whole so that's the insight so let's break down this this little proposition wholeness is negation of discrimination we'll start with wholeness so the whole here is a collective right it's the community which is to say it's a whole of parts a whole composed of separate individual things that's what this word means that's what we're trying to achieve here right community is a whole in which a number of individual people have come together in some way to be to be seen as a whole the second thing i want to focus on is the word negation so negation i'll just point out here involves a negator it involves taking up a perspective on something it's an action right so that that's what the word means and then finally that the last thing we'll look at in that proposition negation of discrimination and what does this mean here it means overlooking differences to grasp the individuals as a collective not as individuals anymore so through that act of negating we are overlooking the differences we are we are um choosing to see these individuals not as individuals but as parts of the whole the community so this is a it's a practical concrete real world insight it's a way of seeing or thinking about the world and that's its value because we can see how it works we can see how it applies to life which is which is really what Watsuji is all about it's a it's a um his ethics is about the concrete the practical the everyday which is why he talks about phenomenology he refers and where why he he takes so much from heidegger or or kind of comes on comes along afterwards heidegger um with a lot of his insights and husserl and shala those kinds of people he's 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 aligning himself with that with that tradition uh so we have this this insight wholeness is negation of discrimination to understand wholeness to see wholeness to grasp it to realize it we have to negate differences nice and that that i i take it uh and that is is perfectly legitimate another way to think about this and this is an analogy i i use sometimes is that of the human body or human being i should say so we can't um so a human being is more than just the sum of its parts right to understand a human being you you have to understand or see the human as more than just a conglomeration of separate things of limbs of organs of um systems you know the digestive system skeletal system all those kinds of things you have to you have to step back from that and see the individual you're talking about the person as a human being as a whole or else the things that they do won't make sense you'll lose something if you try and reduce the human being the whole that is the human being to its parts and a simple example is like greeting someone if you you wave at someone you know um to to reduce that to uh you know the limbs that are that, that move the body parts what what different body parts are doing what the the muscular system what 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 is involved there if you reduce that action to those kinds of things 
you lose the essence of of what that action is, which is a greeting. Right? To understand the greeting as a greeting, you have to see the human being who's doing the greeting as a whole, not as this collection of, of parts. Yes, that will describe, you, you can describe it, you can break it down like that, but something is lost if you do that. If you see the human being as a whole, however, then not as a collection of parts, then you can understand this, this, I guess, a bigger picture than you could otherwise. And it's exactly the same thing here. So whereas we, we can see a human as, as made up of different pieces, we can also step back and see them as a whole and understand their actions and their behaviors as a whole, as the, the, the actions or behaviors of um, a totality, not just a conglomeration of separate pieces. And it's the same with community. We can, in order to understand community, in order to, to, to get to the totality, the wholeness that Watsuji is looking for, we have to step back and see the individuals not as individuals we have to overlook those differences which which make individual the individual people separate individuals and that's what gives us the whole so the whole comes about through a negation beautiful nice excellent idea now it all goes pear-shaped because the next step is to to move from that concrete, real-world, practical proposition to absolute wholeness is absolute negation of discrimination. And now that, you will notice, is a leap to the metaphysical. Now we're talking about the metaphysical. We're not just talking about concrete, real-world, practical situations. We're trying to describe everything the fundamental nature of reality. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with metaphysics. I spend a lot of time thinking about metaphysics, but it's not the same thing as the practical real world. And that's, that's the first problem here, is that just by, by throwing in that word absolute, Watsuji's trying to, to take the, the logic of the proposition which holds at the level of the concrete, the real world, and elevate it to the metaphysical, as if that logic can just be transposed, and it absolutely cannot. That's the first problem. But what we have here then is, and I'll explain why it's not the same in just a minute, but in doing that, because that real-world practical proposition, the first one, uh, wholeness is negation of discrimination, because that was so insightful, it was so um, legitimate, if we, if we just kind of transpose it with the addition of the word absolute, the metaphysical proposition seems to borrow some of that legitimacy, borrow some of that credibility from the original but that's it's it's illegitimate to, to, to do that to, to borrow that legitimacy it's um the, the, the those things cannot be transposed that that proposition cannot be transposed as it is into the metaphysical but the the uh the danger with doing that is that it like i say because this the real world proposition was so strong it gives the illusion that that strength is, is transferred to the metaphysical when it totally isn't. So how is this metaphysical proposition different from the concrete one? We can break it down in the same way. Let's take absolute wholeness first. So this absolute wholeness, remember wholeness in the concrete was um, a collective, a whole made up of parts. Absolute wholeness, however, cannot be that, right? It cannot be a whole made up of parts because it's absolute. It's absolute wholeness. There are no parts. So the, 
the absolute wholeness we're talking about here is a, is a whole, a totality with no parts. Not just seen without parts, not just understood or interpreted without parts, but actually without parts. That's what it means to be absolutely whole. So that's the first thing. That's the first difference. The, other, the second difference is in the word negation. Negation was, in the original proposition, an action. It required a negator, someone or something to do the negating. But here, absolute negation uh, doesn't involve a negator. It can't because what we're talking about here is is absolute wholeness, absolute negation of discrimination. So there is no, there are no parts, right? That was what we, we agreed on with absolute wholeness. So if there are no parts, there can't be a negator uh, separate from the whole to do any kind of negating. If there were a negator doing negate, performing the act of negation, they are separating themselves from that from the whole. So that's impossible. There's no negator here. Negator involves involves discrimination. It involves parts by uh, necessity. So what what this is, is, is not an action. We're not talking about an act of negation. We're talking about a state, some kind of state, original state of the universe or everything that is or the fundamental nature of reality. So that's the second difference. And the third difference in our, in our last um, parcel here is the phrase absolute negation of discrimination. So remember, negation of discrimination in the first practical proposition just meant overlooking differences to grasp the individuals as a collective. Here, it cannot mean that because it's absolute. So instead, it means the absolute elimination of all parts. There are no parts anymore to overlook in the first place. If there were parts, it wouldn't be an absolute negation of discrimination. So this means the elimination of all parts. Very different from the original. So that was the first, the first point I wanted to make. There is no connection, there's no legitimacy in moving from a concrete proposition to that same proposition just applied at a metaphysical level. Just talking about completely different things. But that still hasn't, um, we still haven't looked at the metaphysical proposition itself to see if it stands on its own two feet. That's what we're going to do now. Uh, so why what problems there are in this metaphysical proposition as it as it stands so first up we're going to just going to look at the two parts here absolute wholeness and absolute negation of discrimination absolute wholeness let's take that first so what does it mean everything that is without parts the fundamental nature of reality exists without division without parts it's absolutely whole right? that's what that's all it means but this can't be metaphysical reality this can't be the reality that we live in right because look around you there are, there are parts everywhere it's divisible all over the place absolute wholeness just does not apply to the reality that we live in and I know what you're going to be tempted to say here, you'll be tempted to say, oh yeah, but the reality we live in, we think we live in, is an illusion. It's not real, right? Metaphysical reality is different from the illusory reality in which we live, in which we think we live. But then the illusion is different from the metaphysical reality, which is supposed to be absolute wholeness. How can you have absolute wholeness here and an illusion which is outside of it, right? Somehow, the, whatever the, the fundamental nature of reality is, it will have to include at least the possibility for 
if it is an illusion in which reality appears divided into parts. Which means, if that's the case, absolute uh, the metaphysical reality cannot be an absolute wholeness. It must be capable of being divided up into parts, of being susceptible at least to discrimination. So metaphysical reality, let's just be clear, we live in metaphysical reality. The fundamental nature of reality is where we live. There's nowhere else to live. Okay, so if we're talking about metaphysics here, then we're talking about the world in which we live. It may be true that we don't see, we, we, and so we certainly don't see metaphysical reality itself, but it's not something different from the reality in which we live, right? It, 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 the reality in which we live has to be a part of metaphysical reality. And if metaphysical reality is absolute wholeness, well, look around you. Is this is this absolutely whole? Absolutely whole, right? Not just whole when you have transcended the world of the finite or when you've achieved enlightenment, but is this absolutely whole? Clearly not. And that's that's the real point here: is that abs this this notion of absolute wholeness is an abstraction. It's just a logical construct, a concept without any content. And this is really the danger of this, this whole um, Buddhist metaphysic of absolute emptiness or absolute nothingness, is we end up just playing with concepts, treating concepts, abstract concepts, as if they had real-world reference, um, and they don't. You know, absolute wholeness doesn't refer to anything in reality. It just doesn't. And so that is the first, and you, you, this is what I wanted to say, you see this with Hegel as well, when he talks about pure being, uh, because he, does, he, he carries out a similar move um, equating pure being with nothingness. And the problem is if you accept pure being, uh, and then once you've accepted that, then you, you're kind of drawn in, you're carried along by the, um, the inevitable logic of it. But if you think about pure being, does that even make sense? Does that concept make sense? Pure being. So can there be impure being? And being is existence, right? So can there be something that that doesn't quite exist? Are there different levels of existence? Right? We're just entering um, kind of pseudo-religious territory here. If you're gonna if you're going to accept different levels of existence, different levels of being, such that there can be a pure being and an impure being, um, then, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's no longer philosophy, it's more religion. Uh, and same here, absolute wholeness just just doesn't refer to anything in reality, metaphysical or otherwise. And the second part is exactly the same. Absolute negation of discrimination. Um, this can't be, this can't apply to anything metaphysically real because, again, look around you. Is there an absolute negation of discrimination? No. A a I mean, th things are discriminated, right? You can see different things. The world is broken up into parts. Is it an illusion? Well, you can believe that if you like, but that still doesn't change the fact that that illusion has to be a part of metaphysical reality. It has to be accounted for it in some way. It has to be accounted by it in some way. And that means that whatever metaphysical reality is, it must be something that can be broken up into parts. That can, even if those parts are seen in an illusion. And to say that metaphysical reality is the absolute negation of discrimination then is false because 
that would mean that, uh, as I said, the absolute elimination of all parts. There are no parts. So there can't be an illusion of metaphysical reality, which, which would be itself a part, a discrimination in supposedly absolute negation of discrimination, supposedly the, this metaphysical to, 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 totalistic reality. So that's the first problem. The first two problems, actually. Um, ah, sorry, before we get in, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's this. When we take the, the metaphysical proposition on its own, we see that these are just abstract conceptualizations. Um, they, they don't refer to anything in reality, concrete or metaphysical. Um, and yeah, it's, it's essentially just semantics. We're just playing with words, playing with concepts. Um, and more than that, the proposition itself is redundant because if you think about it, absolute wholeness, absolute negation of discrimination, absolute wholeness, we said it's the whole, everything that is, without parts. Absolute negation of discrimination, the elimination of all parts, it's exactly the same. Those two things are saying the exact same thing. So there's no insight there. Right? It makes no sense. It's like saying A is A. You haven't learned anything through that. Absolute wholeness is absolute negation of discrimination, but by definition, they're the same. Whereas wholeness is negation of discrimination, the original concrete term, there is insight in that because it's not evident, it's not obviously the case that wholeness involves a negation. That, that's the genius of that insight. Uh, but it, it's missing from the, the metaphysical proposition because they literally mean the same thing. They literally mean no parts, uh, which means there's no point in saying it. So the two conclusions I want to draw at this point. First, it doesn't follow that because wholeness is a negation of discrimination, that absolute wholeness is an absolute negation of discrimination. The leap from the concrete to the metaphysical is uh, illegitimate. And second, even when we take the, the metaphysical proposition on its own and analyze the terms, we see that it, these are a meaningless abstract concepts. They have no um, reference in either either concrete reality or metaphysical reality. They, they literally mean nothing. They are just concepts, empty concepts. Okay, so that's kind of the, the hard work done. But the, the quote doesn't finish there. Uh, then Watsuji goes on to say that absolute negation of discrimination, because it's absolute, must be that non-discriminateness which negates the distinction between discriminateness and non-discriminateness. Now, that, that's kind of a, a bit of a mouthful. Um, but I think... We can make sense of this. We can we can understand what he's what Watsuji is getting at here, and basically he's he's doing me one better. So originally I defined the um, absolute discrimination, absolute negation of discrimination as the elimination of all parts. <clears throat> so Watsuji is going further than that, and he's saying it's not just the elimination of parts of all parts. It's the elimination of the very possibility of discrimination. There can't even, po even be a distinction between discriminateness and non-discriminateness. So, so he's eliminating, essentially, the negator, a perspective. He's, he's removing the possibility of there being any kind of perspective which could even see a difference. So not just eliminating differences, 
but eliminating any perspective from which there could be differences. Fine. Uh, it doesn't This doesn't change the fact that this is still an empty abstraction. We haven't, we haven't, the argument hasn't changed to, to anything um, that, that, that makes sense about metaphysical reality as we would, we would expect it to. But then we go from this negating the distinction between discriminateness and non-discriminateness. If it's the elimination of, of all discrimination, including the, the, the distinction between discrimination and non-discrimination, i.e. The, the elimination of a perspective, of a negator, of anything that, that could bring about um, discrimination, then this is absolute emptiness. Yes, it is. Um, agreed. However, oh, and so that means that, if we keep the, the train of reasoning going, if that is absolute emptiness, then absolute wholeness is also absolute emptiness. And that's kind of the, the, the essence of the metaphysical argument here. But there's, there's, there's just no point in analyzing this statement anymore because it's so far down the rabbit hole of abstract conceptual wrangling, just, just playing with concepts that, you know, there's just, there's just no way to reasonably analyze it anymore. You know, we, we end up by just saying that everything is nothing, essentially. But the way we've gotten there is, is through empty abstractions all the way at every point. And if you're talking about empty abstractions, well, it's, it's just, it's what Hegel's always criticized for. It's, he's, he's just playing with logic, you know, pure being. That, that is something that is, it's a fiction. It's a fiction. Absolute wholeness. It's a fiction. Absolute discrimination. Absolute negation of discrimination. It's a fiction. It's the, it's the absolute that, that, that turns something sensible, reasonable, into something um, unreasonable, something nonsensical. Same with, with pure. Being is fine. We can, we can get some traction with being. But pure being, as soon as you add that, you're no longer talking about anything sensible anymore, anything reasonable, anything that... It's not just, it's not, it's not just that it's not sensible. You're not talking about anything that, that means anything. It's now just a meaningless concept. And that's what this, this whole thing is. Negating the distinction between dis uh, discriminat discriminativeness and non-discriminativeness. That's the same as absolute emptiness. That's the same as absolute wholeness. These are all just words now. It's all just empty concepts that, like I say, just, just can't be analyzed, can't be um, investigated in any, in any meaningful sense. So absolute emptiness, let's see what we've got anyway. Absolute emptiness, well, it must mean void. Total nothingness. Not just, not just like empty here, but maybe there's something over here, or empty, but maybe there could be something later if this happens, or you know, it's it's absolute emptiness. Now, clearly, 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 that is not metaphysical reality. Right? Metaphysical reality cannot be absolute emptiness because look around you is there emptiness if there were a true emptiness I, what i what i'm saying wouldn't even make sense here how could i how could i ask you to look around you if there's true emptiness there'd be no one to look around there'd be i wouldn't even be saying this to you so straight away we can see that something has gone wrong if if our if our conclusion is that absolute wholeness equals absolute emptiness. Without even, even thinking about it, we know that something's wrong. Or we know at least we're not talking about metaphysical reality, the i.e. the reality, the fundamental nature of the reality that we inhabit. Clearly that, that's not the case. And 
that's what it is. This 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 notion of absolute emptiness, like the other notions that we've looked at, is an empty abstraction. The problem, though, is that it sounds profound. It sounds like this. There is something to this because it's so it's so out there. It's so wacky. Absolute wholeness is absolute emptiness. Boom. Oh, it feels like it has that 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 feeling of of a bit of a revelation. Um, but I think that is that's illusory. The illus that's what's illusory here. The the idea that this is a deep, deep, profound insight. At this point, it isn't because it's all abstract. It's all conceptual. It's all uh, it's all lost in in a realm of of um, to be honest of make believe. There's nothing tying any of this discussion to reality concrete or otherwise or metaphysical you know there's there's nothing that we can make sense of here i mean that literally there's nothing meaningful being said in this and then still not finished because the the very end of that quote watsuji says therefore community i.e in the real world now back back to the real the, the concrete community as a whole of individual human beings, requires the individual humans which comprise it to realize emptiness. And so now you can see what's happened, right? We've gone from, and this is the, 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 the full arc. We started with the concrete proposition, full of meaning, a genuine insight in every sense of the word. Wholeness is negation of discrimination. We started from that, then we elevated it by adding the word absolute to a metaphysical truth proposition. Absolute wholeness is absolute negation of discrimination. This we saw was, there were two problems, right? The elevation is, is, is not, uh, is incorrect, incorrect, it's illegitimate. And uh, once we're here, or the, the other problem was that these terms are all abstract. They don't have any connection to anything. They're just concepts. But once we're here, we picked up this term absolute emptiness because it, it's, all, it's all abstract. We're not, we're not talking about anything real. We're not constrained by reality in any, in any way, shape or form. So... We could, we could describe or we could define absolute negation of discrimination as absolute emptiness. Um, and so we've picked up that term and now we've just gone backwards, right back to the concrete and imported, transposed absolute emptiness into the concrete. So it now it just becomes emptiness. And that's the arc. We had a movement from... Uh, the concrete to the metaphysical, then back to the concrete. So this inverse of our original mistake means that, that we, the, the mistake has just kind of been doubled, if you like. We're doubling down on the same error. Absolute emptiness is a meaningless abstraction in the same way that whole, absolute wholeness was a meaningless abstraction derived from wholeness. Uh, and now abs ab absolute emptiness is the meaningless abstraction, which gets converted into, and this is the surprise, something meaningful in the concrete. So when, when Watsuji says the individual humans have to realize emptiness, this makes sense in the real world proposition. Because when we say emptiness, what we mean is a negation of what it is that makes the individual individual. You have to see yourself not as an atomistic part, as, as an atomistic, um, self-enclosed individual. You have, to, you have to empty yourself of that in order to, um, to be part of this whole, which is the community. It makes perfect sense at the level of the concrete. 
But because of this whole confusion and and um, abstract nature of the, the metaphysical, the metaphysical half of this of this whole discussion is is completely devoid of meaning. So that's my analysis of this. <clears throat> that's my uh, that's where I've kind of come down on this one and I it, like I say I, it was good to go through because I uh, it's it's something which I've never liked absolute emptiness absolute nothingness it just doesn't sound right from the from the very beginning to me it sounds like something's wrong but I but I never kind of sat down and worked out exactly why but here it's a perfect demonstration of um, why this this whole why all this talk of absolute nothingness or abs and absolute anything really is, is always a recipe for disaster. Uh, and especially if you start saying absolute nothingness, right? Um, so anyway, that's kind of my analysis of that. Let's have a look at a summary. So this whole video was about absolute emptiness. We started with a reasonable, concrete, real-world proposition. Wholeness is the negation of discrimination. This is a, a classic insight, a genuine insight. But then we, we elevated this to the level of the metaphysical when we said absolute wholeness is the absolute negation of discrimination. The two problems we identified were that the leap to the metaphysical from the concrete is illegitimate. You can't just transpose a proposition that has value and legitimacy at the level of the concrete and expect it to have anything like that at the level of the, the metaphysical. And the second problem was, once we took the metaphysical on its own, we saw that all of the terms that made it up were abstract, uh, and they did not present an accurate depiction of metaphysical reality. Because, look around you, is if, if absolute wholeness involves, if, if absolute wholeness is absolute, then there can't be any parts. But there clearly are. Whether, whether that's an illusion or not is irrelevant, because an illusion is still something. It's still a part of of metaphysical reality. Metaphysical reality has to be able to accommodate that. If it's absolute wholeness, it can't. And then there was some abstract meaninglessness which follows from that metaphysical proposition. We, we looked at absolute negation of discrimination, meaning the elimination of everything. So this was not just the elimination of parts as I first defined it. But it was kind of worse, actually. Watsuji took what I, my definition and made it um, even less plausible by saying there's nothing there. There are not just no parts, but there's no possibility for there to ever be parts because there's no uh, perspective. There's no negator. There is no distinction even between discriminantness and non-discriminantness. There's just nothing. And that was... The, uh, the next re recognition, realization, the elimination of everything equals absolute emptiness, which therefore equals absolute wholeness. At that point, um, something's gone wrong. It, it's, it's pretty clear when you get to that point that something's gone wrong. If, if we're still supposed to be talking about metaphysical reality, the fundamental nature of reality, um, then, yeah, something's gone wrong. And what it was, was we are dealing in abstractions, empty concepts. And finally, we looked at the inverse of the original confusion, which was where we, we came back from metaphysical, from the metaphysical to the practical, to the concrete. Uh, where Watsuji said, community requires that individual humans realize emptiness. So this is just a reverse of our original mistake. Uh, abstract emptiness is 
Uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, absolute emptiness is an abstraction, but concrete emptiness turned out to be fine a in that the real world original proposition, uh, when it, we could understand it as a negation, as a way of, of looking at yourself, as, a, as an action that you could take. Um, it, it all made sense at that level. But the, the problem was this conflation between the metaphysical and the concrete and the way that the metaphysical <clears throat> was just ended up being empty concepts. Okay, um, so yeah, that, that's kind of my take on that. Um, I, the, really, the only way I, I can see anybody getting out of this getting something um, that isn't abstract emptiness from this is to say that uh, we don't see reality as it really is. We don't see metaphysical truth. Um, metaphysical truth is something different. It's a, and at this point, it becomes something like a higher plane of existence. Um, which you might say is what happens when you become enlightened, for example, which is obviously, though, a parallel with something like Christian heaven, right? It, it's a movement to a different level, a different plane of being, if you like. But then the absolute wholeness is not very absolute anymore, is it? Because it's excluding the mortal realm, the realm of illusion in which we are at the moment. So it's not particularly absolute. We're not talking about all of reality. We've kind of broken reality into two. Uh, a concrete, um, corporeal realm and this higher, uh, absolute, he slash heavenly realm. And if you want to go that route, that's fine. That, that kind of gets you out of this, um, the problems that I've been mentioning here. But... It still doesn't sound very uh, compelling because you've got this the problem of absolute. If it's an absolute wholeness, it's not just restricted to one one kind of level of being, if you like. Or maybe you could argue that it is, but whatever. Um, then it becomes more religion, doesn't it? There's no, you know, you're just not dealing with metaphysics in the in what I would consider the true sense of the word. As it, re as it refers to um, the fundamental nature of reality itself, not, not, we're not cleaving reality into two. It's kind of, it's kind of a, a cheat. It's too easy to do that, right? And then you, then you can say whatever you like because you've broken reality. Um, and uh, yeah, then, like I say, it's, it's more religion than philosophy at that point, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Hopefully you get something from that. Um, this was definitely worthwhile for me, even though it was a, a, a totally critical um, video, uh, except for the very beginning, right? Except for that first part, which I'll just say again, since it has been so negative, that first part is pure gold. Wholeness is negation of community. That... There's, there's some real, real value in that, um, that that I think is has been overlooked um, by and large by a lot of people. And it refers back to Heidegger too, right, who, who um, emphasized the notion of, of uh, negation and nullity, um, but again, in, a, in an ontological setting, not in a metaphysical one. And that's really where... You start running into problems, I think. Okay, enough from me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.